Accruals and Deferrals Part 1. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. This is a blog that was posted in early April on accruals and deferrals. So let's talk about um, what they are specifically, and then let's go through some examples. So accruals and deferrals are posted when you use accrual basis accounting. Now that differs from cash basis accounting. So let's talk about the difference between those two methods. Cash basis accounting is essentially posting accounting entries using your checkbook. That's what I mentioned here. So that is when you deposit, deposit a client's payment, you post, post that to revenue. You debit to increase cash, you credit to increase revenue. When you write a check for an expense, that expense gets posted to your accounting records, you would debit to increase an expense and you would credit to decrease cash. So cash basis accounting is using your checkbook. However, most entities, the vast majority, use accrual basis accounting, which complies with the matching principle, which is what I have there in bold. Revenue is matched with the expenses that are incurred to generate the revenue, which gives us a better idea of our profitability. And what makes this tricky, and the reason we have accruals and deferrals is, you match the revenue with the related expense regardless of when they occur during the year. So we don't necessarily have revenues and expenses matching with the movement of cash. So here's an example. Let's say you pay for materials in February and you use them to make a product that's sold in April. Accrual basis accounting states the material cost should be part of the cost of sales of that item that you sell in April, even though you bought the material in February. So now let's talk about some specific accruals and deferrals. The first one is prepaid assets. A prepaid asset is when you pay for something in advance, and we call it an asset because it represents an amount you can use as an expense later in the period, so it does have uh, value to you, something you don't have to pay later. A good example is insurance premiums. At our house, we pay for our insurance premiums each month, and that is for the upcoming month. You always prepay for your insurance coverage. You pay for the period before that period occurs to get your coverage. With accrual accounting, when you pay for that premium in advance, you debit an account called prepaid insurance, a prepaid asset, and you credit to reduce cash. As time passes, you then debit insurance expense, you recognize the expense, and you reduce the prepaid insurance account. This allows you to get the insurance expense posted in the right period, the period that you've paid for. So if I pay my insurance premium at the end of February for March, I want to have the insurance expense in March, not in February when I made the payment. And I describe insurance as a period cost. It's an expense that's incurred with the passage of time. Another good example is interest on a loan. That expense occurs with the passage of time. Different Accrual and deferral topic is accrued payroll. And this is an example of where you pay for labor costs, write the check, after you match the cost with the revenue. In other words, the expense, payroll expense, labor expense, is posted before the cash moves, before the cash is paid for the expense. And we've all had jobs growing up where maybe the company ran payroll on a particular day of the month, like the 1st, the 15th, or the last day of the month. Other companies pay every two weeks regardless of when those days fall in a given month. So every, every other Friday, every other Monday. So let's assume you own a gift shop, and you have employees that you owe wages to for the period of time from December 26th to December 31st of year one, the last few days of a calendar year. And because you're on a two-week cycle, you won't pay payroll until January 5th of the next year. And the question is, what journal entries do you have to make under accrual accounting? 
well, we need to get that payroll expense in year one because that's when we incurred it because we paid those employees for the last few days of December and we want to match that payroll expense with the sales for December. So on the last day of the year, of year one, we debit to increase the payroll expense and we credit an account called accrued payroll, which is an indication to the financial statement reader that we owe somebody for payroll. On January 5th, when we actually pay it, pay the payroll that was owed in December, we reduce by debiting the accrued payroll account and we credit to reduce cash when we write the checks. And so accrued payroll now has a balance of zero. We increased it at the end of December for those days that we owed for December payroll and we decreased it on January 5th when we actually made the payments. I'll do more on accruals and deferrals later, but here are links to two other videos that might help you that are based in Excel. For the toughest accounting review topics, um, you can go to this link. Here is the web page where that link is. I teach these toughest topics in a small group 90-minute sessions. They're limited to 10 people each. These are the courses that are upcoming and the courses that people tell me are the toughest to learn in accounting. And so those are the small group 90-minute sessions that I cover. You can click on this page on my website if you have an interest in attending. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.